I probably don't need to say a word today. <laughs> that was really good. Good gospel message. Slowing down. It's part of what the gospel readings are about today. Uh, it's about lostness and boundness. And he's not just talking about finding a coin and finding a sheep. He's just generally speaking more specifically about losing and finding your way through life. And in order to do that, you've got to slow down in order to see when God is going to give you a gentle nudge or a knock in your brain and your soul to let you know he's on the prowl for you. Because that's the promise of the gospel. He's looking out for you. And he will find you at the times of the occasion when you need to be found. And you all about, you know all about lostness and boundness. Uh, 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 I was talking to somebody uh, a couple weeks ago who lost their keys. And uh, they are still lost. And guess what? He's not celebrating and he's not joyous. <laughs> now on the other hand, a couple years ago, I lost my keys, every last thing in one of them, all of them. Couldn't find them for a while. And I scoured the house. Well, we have linoleum on our floors instead of a dirt floor. Uh, but it doesn't much matter. You've still got to, you know, root in all the corners. And uh, finally I opened the freezer and there they were. <laughs> on the top shelf in a freezer. And by God, they were fresher than anything could have been. <laughs> they were in good shape. So this is fine. And yes, I was celebratory about the whole thing. And as you have been at the times and occasions when you've lost things. Um, on either the early morning news show yesterday morning or late night news Friday night, I can't remember which, I saw the, uh, uh, there was a, out in Colorado, a, a couple, uh, the one gentleman being sort of sickly, unable to do certain things, and his wife, uh, what they finally decided to do was to get paint. Uh, and they were on a hummock of land around which mudslides and the water's coming during the floods, and she painted SOS, SOS, on their uh, driveway. And a helicopter flew over. The lost was found. And so as they were interviewed in very briefly, you know, 15 seconds of fame, you know, how that goes. And you don't want to take too much time because, after all, there was no blood involved, so it's not newsworthy. Mm -hmm. Well, blood bleeds, you notice. Okay. In any case, that was a good thing. The lost is found. And that's the point Jesus is making about his work in the world, is that you who are lost will be found. Uh, a few years ago, our, our old dog, who has since gone to heaven, BJ, uh, was gone for the night overnight because his buddy, Queenie, had broken off of her chain in her backyard and ran off, and he ran off with her. I think they had like this love thing going. I can't swear to it because I don't really know. Anyhow, she got this long metal chain wrapped around a downed tree and couldn't do anything. So, of course, they stayed together through the night. And I went looking around for them and I couldn't find them in the daytime. I checked the places where they might be. And I found them together. And let Queenie off of her chain, opened my truck door, which is always clean. <laughs> Didn't matter this time. In hops Queenie, ladies first. In hops BJ, they're both big dogs, big butts, taking up all the space. Close the door, I squeeze in and boom, so I can get in and drive. Take them home. The lost has been found, and there are two families now happy. So lostness and foundness is always part of our experience. And that's why Jesus uses these parables in his, in his understanding and teaching about who is God to you. God is the one who will seek you and find you when you are lost. And that is his promise to do that kind of work and that kind of ministry, finding you in the time when you are lost. The, uh, Good news for us is that God doesn't care uh, whether you're rich or poor, 
whether you got your life together or not, or think you do anyhow, he promises to be present with you, to find you, and to seek you out. Uh, you'll notice in the first reading, I won't be saying more than this about that, that uh, uh, Moses had to argue, argue passionately with God not to destroy Israel after he had brought them out of slavery into the freedom of the promised land because this, the, the people had been acting so ignorant and God was going to turn his face away from them and Moses, the mediator, argued diligently and strongly with the Lord to say, no, you are not going to all this trouble of saving these people this time and then ditch them. You are not turning your face away. That's something else that's in the readings today. When you have been called to seek that one or those who are lost, and you do it successfully one time, and then it goes to, goes to heck. <laughs> goes that one. Oh, that's all. <laughs> goes, goes back. You are going to go back and put your face that way and get there again, saving those who are lost. And you call in the reinforcements as you need to do that. You'll notice who was present there at the celebration, right? The friends and neighbors, the community, the people. It wasn't a solo operator saving anybody. It was a communal, communal and community effort. Uh, but the, the whole idea of the saving uh, of those who were lost is one of the major themes uh, and one of the major ideas that Jesus was presenting to people about the nature of God, that he was one who did that very thing. Uh, I was on Wikipedia, which is an online encyclopedia, uh, I mean, you know not to take that as the truth, the gospel truth, right? You know that nothing on the internet you can take totally as true. You all do know this. Okay, you weren't persuading me there for a minute. Please. <laughs> well, they had an uh, interesting thing on there. They had the, uh, uh, under the uh, heading of God, they had a very brief article in there on... Uh, on that uh, uh, Antoinette Tuff, the, uh, uh, the, the worker in the school, school secretary who talked that young man down from, from shooting all the school kids a few weeks ago. She had been placed under the, under the uh, description of who God is and how he works. And whoever edits Wikipedia decided that that was not a place where you would put her as a work of God. See, for you and me, right, what was she doing? She was not just saving lives, but she was also seeking the lost, that young man. And in her conversation, uh, <clears throat> with no choice, but at least on that day, to hang in there and do what she felt was uh, understood to be the right thing to do, to save lives, she said this, <clears throat> I can help you. Let's see if we can work it out so that you don't have to go away with the police for a long time. And then as the crisis came to a bloodless end, <clears throat> she says, it's going to be all right, sweetheart. I just want you to know that I love you, though, okay? And I'm proud of you. That's a good thing that you're giving up. And don't worry about it. We all go through something in life like that. Seeking the lost, finding the lost, and beginning the long, long march to a new way of life and a new way of living. That is the promise that Jesus makes to you and to me through faith. First of all, recognition of lostness. Second, recognition that we will meet that lostness right where you are with all of the resources that you need. And third, through faith, your recognition of an invitation to being saved. 
And not just being saved for heaven, but being saved out of the disaster of your life at that moment, at that time. So that you can walk in a new way. The way. The way of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, ten minutes. <laughs>